Wow, the ocean is roaring out there today. Look at that little shore break we got there. So I was a little torn today about what to talk about. You see, I got my Napa hat on for my Chase Elliott thing. Um, love my boy Chase. Um, had a great run on Sunday racing in NASCAR, fourth place finish last night, challenging for the lead, gets wrecked by Kurt Busch. That, that hurts. I don't know what's gonna go on from there, but I considered having a topic about that today, but I chose to stay a little more towards the theme of the achievement and purpose and that that I've been on for the last little bit. So, in the word, in the uh, book is a man thinking, there's a 52 word phrase. It goes something like this. I sort of had to write this down. He conceives of, mentally builds up an ideal condition of his life. The vision is a wider liberty and a, and a call. Okay, let me start this over. He conceives of, mentally builds up an ideal condition of life. The vision of a wider liberty and a larger scope taking possession of him. Unrest, unrest, listen to that, urges him to action and he utilizes all his spare time and means, small though they are, to develop of his latent powers and, re and, and resources. Now, first of all, let's know that he can be she and that it's important to understand that what's given to you by James Allen in this part of As a Man Thinketh is a formula for success and anything you set out to achieve. Because when we go out forward and we have this vision, you know, he's talking about a person who's a young person, he's mired in poverty, he's in un unhealthy, um, unhealthy conditions, he's basically unschooled, and this person goes on to, as he says, a world influencer. Napoleon Hill, in his book, Think and Go Rich, calls it a definite, definiteness of purpose. Now, remember the fleas the other day that I talked about? Remember the story of the fleas, the train, the fleas, and that what happens is they get to a level and they never push themselves above that level. And really, that's a true situation for everybody. You know, people constantly are going out, they achieve something, they say, wow, I'm, I'm pretty good here where I am and they never go to the greatness that they can have or they can be. They don't take action. So Napoleon Hill calls this definiteness of purpose. He said it creates an unrest that moves us into action, gives us energy and drive to spend, spend all spare time and our means developing ourselves to achieve levels we've never reached before and we never really knew what we could reach before, right? So, you know, I'm using that word right a lot these days when I talk. So, I have three beautiful daughters. Um, each has their own set of skills. Each has their own thing that they do. But today, I'm gonna talk about my middle daughter who has middle child syndrome. You know, she never got recognized and that type of thing. You know, she could have barely be, she could have easily been one of these people who never dreamed of having more, got out of school at the University of Florida and adjusted her situation and, and accordingly and just went on to expect less than she was capable of. But because of unrest in her life, the situation we were going through family-wise, she chose to do something different. She chose to move to California. So she moves out to California on the hope that she is going to get a job working for the San Francisco Giants. She goes out there and when she gets there, the Giants tell her, wow, we really like you. We have a problem though. We just gave away that job. But we have a friend up in Sacramento that has um, a position available with a team called the Sacramento Kings and the, um, the Monarchs, Sacramento Monarchs, which is the WNBA team at the time. Sight unseen, 
working on hope, faith, and that she knows there's something better out there, she goes to Sacramento, gets the job, works her butt off up there, single purpose. She didn't, she didn't go shack up with somebody. She didn't go all do all these things she could have done that opportunity prevented, uh, gave themselves that. But what she did do was work tirelessly, stay positive, surrounded herself with great positive people. And you know, when that, when that growth in her life, she could have sat there and said, hey, I'm with the Sacramento Kings. I'm doing all this good stuff. She didn't do that. She wasn't happy with that. She wanted more. So she began, she actually worked for the governor of the state of California for a while. She did wedding planning. And as a result of all the things she did with excellence and with drive, she received an opportunity. And now she is working in a company. She has uh, found the love of her life. And I, last time I went out to visit there, I saw the people she was with. She surrounded herself with positive, successful people who weren't the naysayers. You know, a lot of times when we share our dreams with people, they go like, why are you going to do that? I have people constantly tell me, dude, you're like 66 years old. Why are you trying this, this, this new thing like this? Why are you doing, what do we got in, to, to do in the world? You know, the other day I had a meeting about, um, about training and opening a small facility that I want to open. Someone says, why are you going to do that? Why don't you just keep doing what you're doing? Why don't you just sell this place off and live on the money? Well, I don't think I've made that way. Some of us aren't. And I'm happy to be that person, quite honestly. There were 3,000 people interviewed. And those 3,000 people, 94% of them were, were deemed to be, have no purpose in life. Okay, they didn't have that definiteness of purpose. Does it any wonder why people grow old and, and look in the mirror and go, man, life's passed me by. Now, I haven't been successful with everything I've done. I've made a lot of mistakes, but remember the lesson yesterday. Learn from your mistakes, right? We can learn, we can reapply those. So, I have three lessons I hope to convey today. Number one, there is more than life than you can possibly imagine. But you've got to take the chance to go to it, and you've got to go and work at it and be defined in the purpose you want. The second one is to use the tail to stretch you so that you will dream, dream more. It will help you recognize the opportunities that you have in front of you. And it'll give you the courage to pursue them. How many times did you, did you dream of something? Like, oh, no, I can't do that, right? Girls, girls would come in and say, I want to be a size six dress. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a 14 now. I can never get down to there, right? We've seen those transformations. People say, I can never start my own business. But yet, they were a wasted talent. Third thing, defeat the negative talk monster. You heard in the things I said today, unrest drives you to do things that you didn't think you would do. Defeat the negative people around your life and find people who encourage you. Surround yourself with people who are successful people who want to see you succeed. If people are in there for their own win and you lose, they're not the people you need around you. I'd like, I'd like to relay a story to you, and I wish I had one of my beautiful daughters walking on the beach with me right now, because I'd like to be like that guy that was taking a walk with his daughter. His daughter looks up at the sky He says, Dad, if that's the wrong side of heaven and it looks so beautiful, what must the right side of heaven look like? Well, I'm going to stretch that to you guys today to say, if your life is good and you love it, and this is the wrong side of it, 
think how much great this is on the other side for you. There's that little rough ocean. I've had to maintain my balance today and walking through this because the water's hitting me pretty good and it's pretty rough and it's running me out. So I'm gonna enjoy a little more time walking on the beach. And I'm gonna head to church this morning if you're uh, Orthodox Christian and your name is Dean, Dino, Constantine, Costa, Helen, Elaine, Eleni. Happy name day is a huge feast day for our church. Keep the faith. Have a wonderful day and make, make this Thursday. Is this Thursday or Wednesday? Let's see. Oh, this is, this is Thursday. Make this Thursday tremendous, huh? God bless y'all.